One of the major reasons why we use front-end frameworks is to be able to encapsulate our code in a set of components. So in the web platform, we've got a div, we've got h1, h2, h3, and paragraphs, but oftentimes we wrap them all together and we start thinking about a certain component. So let's say a navbar or let's say a card. And we use front-end frameworks to be able to reuse this component later on by simply calling its name. Well, you could do that natively in the web platform today, and you can do that in conjunction with your front-end framework. Enter web components. So I'm starting with a simple index.html page that loads the app.javascript. The goal of it is to create an app dash navbar component. So I'm going to start by creating a class app navbar, which will extend, so inherit from HTML element. An HTML element is the interface that all of your HTML element implement. Now inside this navbar, I will define a constructor, which will be called when it's instantiated. And I also need to call the constructor of HTML element, so I will call super. And then inside of it, I need to attach a shadow to it. And this is going to have a mode open. So you will see in a few seconds what this does. And the mode open means you will still have JavaScript programmatical access to the elements inside of this shadow. And now I will select the shadow root and then I will change its inner HTML to just a simple to h2 hello word. This is the most basic example. And then at the end, I have to define this. So under custom elements, I call the define method and I give it the name of app-navbar and call the class app navbar. So this will allow us to have our component called app dash navbar. Note that you should have at least one dash so you cannot create a new custom element that does not have a dash in its name. That's to avoid collision with browser defined components. So let's say you define a component that's called card right now, but what if the browser end up defining one in a few years? So you're not allowed to define card, but you could call yours app-card or my-card or anything as long as it contains a dash. So now this is enough for me to use this component. I can just go back over here. If I use this component with app-navbar and I reload the page, I will have my own component over here. Now let's take a look at DevTools. This is the app-navbar component and this is the shadow root. And you will see that the styles that I'm going to author later on are all going to be encapsulated into this shadow root. And inside of it, there's an h2 hello world. So this is a reusable component, which means, of course, I could define another app-navbar and then I will have this component once again. This is great for reusability. Now, let's make things a little bit more advanced. Most of the times, this will be way more complicated than just an h2. So we actually want to define this somewhere else in our page. So I'm going to define a template. So inside the template tag, you could have whatever HTML you need and the browser will not execute it. So if you had an image, it will not load. If you had a script or style, they will not load. I could say this is h3, this is app navbar, and then inside of it, I will have a paragraph which has 10 words of Lauren Epson. And then I could go over here and then let's find this template. So we do document.query selector template. I could replace that with template.content, but you do have to clone node because the template can only be used once and this allows you to clone it. You have to pass this to append child. And now if you reload the page, you will have the app now for but with a more complicated template. Now this element has some lifecycle hook, so you could hook into connected callback. And I'm gonna say console log element added to the DOM. And I can have a disconnected callback. And this is gonna fire once the element gets removed from the DOM. So this is a great place to add event listener, and this is a great place to remove event listener. Let's take a look. This is element added to the DOM twice because we have two elements. And if I delete this element, element removed from the DOM. You could also pass to this element some attributes. So you could define your own theme, for example, and then you could say this is going to be theme dark. You could read this theme dark from within your app and react to it. And you could also react to changes. So first of all, if you just want to read this theme, you could read it, let's say, over here. We can do console log this dot get attribute 
and then theme. And this is just a regular attribute and you'll be able to get dark. So it's null for the first one because we don't have any theme and it's dark for the second one. And you could also react to changes. So for example, what if dark gets changed into light? You could actually know that this has changed. And for that, you have to define attribute changed callback. And then this will give you the name of the attribute, the old value, and then the new value. And then I'm just gonna put them all into console table. But let's give it a try. And if I change the theme from dark to light, we see this function doesn't fire because by default, custom elements will not listen to any change in any attribute. You have to specify with the static get observed attributes, which attributes you want to observe. So you just return an array and then you say, I want to observe the theme attribute. Now, if I reload the page, you see this is the first time it changes. It changes from null to dark. And I will clear now. And now if I change this from dark to light, you will see this the theme change from dark to light. Now let's take a look at my favorite part of this, which is styling. If I define some inline styles over here and I say h3 color red and then text decoration underline, this will affect the h3 over here. Let's reload. Yeah, this is h3 with color red. But now let's try adding an h3 outside of this custom element. So in the body, h3 title of the page. And then if you reload the app, you'll see even though h3 is the same page, those styles that are defined inside of the shadow root do not bleed outside of the shadow root. And this is one of the major benefits of Shadow DOM. If you want to check for support for Shadow DOM, you can go to caniuse.com, then check for Shadow DOM v1. So v0 was the first version, and then v1 is the second version, the one that you will end up using. And Edge is currently working on it, and with the recent news of them adopting Chromium, hopefully it will land soon. There is a polyfill you could use, but I'm future-proofing my videos because soon it will just work everywhere. So now you can see that it's relatively easy to create your own web component, but arguably the code can be a little bit more expressive and less verbose. So keep watching so you can see how we're gonna make this even better. So click on the subscribe button and the notification bell and I'll see you next week.